Alright guys, welcome back to another video here, Professor Drizzy PTCGO. This is a very cool idea for a deck. It is basically an anti-meta rogue type of deck here, and I will explain why. First, let me get into a quick detail here of how we have this deck laid out. So, we have one copy of my boy Harambe, obviously for the instructability, for some draw support there. We run a 3-3 line. We have three type null. We don't really use Merciless Strike or Headbang, but those can uh, be last ditch efforts really if we need to. But three copies of Silvalli GX. We have the ability Gyro Unit, where we are able to have no retreat cost for a basic Pokemon, so Absol will not shut us down in any way because of this ability. And Muck does not shut off that ability either. Turbo Drive is three colorless for 120 damage, and we get to attach a basic energy card from our discard pile to one of our bench Pokemon. We also have Rebel GX. So it does 50 damage for each of our opponent's bench Pokemon. So Celestor likes to play a full bench. Picaram typically likes to play a full bench as well. So we could potentially just get a knockout there without doing anything really sneaky or using any other damage modifiers. Now we have 4-4 four, four line of Fomantis Lorantis. The Lorantis has the Sunny Day ability. So this does boost grass and fire Pokemon. Now you might say, well, wait a minute. You don't have any grass or fire Pokemon. Well, that is true but we do have the fire memory when this is attached to Zivali, he is a fire type and he will hit for fire type weakness so that is where we will get potential damage boost if we can have all four out which is hard hard to do doesn't really happen but we can get at least 20 40 maybe 60 more damage now 60 more damage on top of turbo drive does 180 and we can one shot things such as tapu lele or uh, Marshadow GX is another good example of a Pokemon that a lot of people are taking in their, into their decks to try and one-shot uh, Zoroarks, but we can also one-shot Celesaur, even if they're trying to play things such as uh, Choice Helmet, Aether Paradise, and the only other one would be Weakness Policy, but we do play a Field Blower, so we can get rid of that Weakness Policy. We don't have to worry about that anymore, as well as if Picaron plays Weakness Policy, we don't need the Lorantis out at all to be able to use Fighting Memory to one-shot a Picaron. So we have abilities to one-shot two of the big tag teams, actually all three of the big tag teams, except for Gengar Mimikyu. We wouldn't be able to uh, we wouldn't be able to one-shot that, but nonetheless, we are able to one-shot the most the other three popular tag team GX cards. So we also have Magurna. Magurna has changed close ability where we're able to take a tool card attached to one of our Pokemon in our hand. Um, attached from one of our Pokemon and put it into our hand. So if you do need to play a Cynthia or a Lily and you have those in your hand, you can drop them down onto Fulmantis, Lorantis, even Magurna itself, the Type Null, the Oranguru. Maybe you put it on your Tapu Lele and you can pick it back up next turn. That way you aren't going to get those same cards back with Cynthia and you aren't going to uh, are you going to be able to get more value out of the Lily? We do run two Lilies, but before we get through that, we'll have the Tapu Lele to be able to Wonder Tag to get a supporter. Uh, maybe it's a first turn and we want to grab uh, one of our two copies of Professor Elm and get out our Fomantis into our hand, drop them down on the bench. We've got two copies of Nest Ball. This is really just to get the Magirna, Oranguru, maybe a Type Null because we have netball and that's going to be what we use to try and be consistent without having to put in viridian forest there's a reason that we don't put viridian forest in and i'll get to that here in a second but the netballs will be able to either get us an energy or get us our foe mantis in case we don't hit professor elm's lecture on our opening hand and then we have one copy of rescue stretcher so sometimes you have to ultra ball away either a type null a seal valley gx or something along those lines and we can get it back with rescue stretcher being able to get back that damage boost is very critical for this deck so we need that one copy of rescue stretcher we have four copies of ultra ball as well that can help us find our tapu lele maybe our seal valley gx something along those lines and we have three copies of altar of the sun and you might wonder well why would you need altar of the sun if you're not a steel and you're not a fire well we already went over that we are a fire pokemon when we have fire memory now in other matchups it's not really necessary because in the pikaram matchup we don't need it but it's here to bump the thunder mountain that's very important we can also bump wondrous labyrinth because if Celestor drops that down or if we're even playing against guard of war and they drop that down we need to attach an extra energy just to attack we don't want to have to deal with that problem 
we've got four copies of Cynthia for draw support, one copy of Erica, because sometimes you've got some things in your hand that you want to keep and you want to be able to get some value with a draw. Uh, we've got three copies of Guzma. This really comes in clutch because we've got gyro unit. We don't need a full four copies. We also want to play a judge. We want some hand disruption here just to be able to keep our opponent off check from being able to get what they want. We already said two copies of Lily, two copies of Elm's Lecture, the two copies of Fighting Memory, and the two copies of Fire Memory. We want we run four copies of Double Colorless Energy as well as eight Grass Energy. Now, if you have to, you can always Turbo Drive onto Lorantis because it benefits from its own boost. So. Well, maybe 80, as long as he has his own thing up and he is active, he will also hit for 100. Maybe there's another one on the bench. He can hit for 120. So it's not the most effective attacker, but he can be used and as a last resort, as well as a Ranguru. I haven't had to run into that situation because most of the time I'm not uh, needing to. Now, the Altar of the Sun is very uh, clutch because when we have a fire memory, attached to Silvalli GX. We have no weakness. Well, what's Silvalli's weakness? His weakness is fighting so that Marshadow isn't going to be able to one-shot us. Baby Buzzwall isn't going to be able to one-shot us on his Sledgehammer turn. Even if he has Choice Ban, he would do 150 with Diancie, 170, but we do survive. And if we have our, fighting, our, our fire memory on, and just one Lurantis up, we can one-shot him. We one-shot Zapdos as well. Zapdos isn't gonna be a problem because we'll just run right through him. So really, the only other thing would be hitting 130 for Giratina. And once again, as long as we have a fire memory and as long as we have a Lurantis down with that sunny day ability, we can one-shot them. So the only weakness here would be really if we run into anything that has a heavy field blower count. But right now in the format, not really many people are running a heavy field blower count. So that's a good profile of what this deck can do. It can prevent you from having that fighting weakness. Buzzwell's not really gonna be that much of a threat to us. Uh, Lycan Rock as well as Lucario aren't gonna be able to get one shots on us. And we're gonna be able to one shot Picaroms potentially as well as one shot those Celosaurs. So that's a good idea. This I have not seen done in the format and I think it's very unique. This is my, uh, my patented idea that I came up with here. So let's get into some of these matches and see how this deck runs. Hopefully you can run up against at least a Celosaur, maybe a Picaram, but nonetheless, that is the profile. Alright, we see Grass Fire as our opponent's typing for their deck. They are flipping to see if uh, they'll go first. We actually win the coin flip. That is nice. Hopefully we can get off an Elm's Lecture here because that is most likely the ideal start here. Um, this is very, very rough. We're obviously just going to have to Cynthia unless we get something really beneficial off the top of the deck here. I think I am going, uh, I'm going to drop this down because we do, we do play the Magirna. I could play this. It, it actually isn't the, the, the critical thing here that I need to worry about really. It may, let's see, fire Pokemon have no weakness. So actually it would help. It won't help him out. I was worried that his, uh, that if Silvalli becomes a fire type. If I'm hitting, well, I am hitting against grass as well, but I sh I, I'll be okay here. Okay, we'll be okay. So uh, the next thing we want to start getting set up is obviously we want to start getting set up a type null. I'm going to put the energy on him. Uh, we don't use Fomantis slash Lorantis as an attacker. I would do, I would have no problem doing synthesis, except for the fact that it's our first turn when we cannot attack, but we want to have the we want to have the type null down. That way we can evolve on the next turn and we get our free retreat ability as well there. So um, that's pretty good at this point. Now that's burning one Cynthia from the deck already. Might be nice to go ahead and do Elm's Lecture, but because we're already a turn behind at this point in terms of evolving things, I don't think it's really beneficial here. The best thing that we can do at this point 
Um, we actually don't even really want to evolve at this point because if we evolve, then we don't have a way to retreat. So the better option here is literally just play Cynthia. If we hit a DCE and uh, we do with the Savali, then we've got game here at this point because we can evolve once we get them onto the bench. So we go, we retreat. We can say well played. Um, this was just uh, a sort of a lucky start, really. I mean, we hit we hit some lucky uh, lucky cards there off of Cynthia to really get an upset win here. So let's just go right back into it because that really doesn't give you an idea of how to show off the deck at that point. I mean, you saw a few things, but it's it's pretty basic at that point, right? And man, those are loading very quickly that I don't even get a chance to see what it is that they're playing. Thought I saw lightning. Thought I saw grass. Willie Walter. Willie Walter. Let's see what you're playing here. He decides to go first. Okay. And this is a this is a much better start compared to what we had last time. I'm almost so bold enough as to put the type null in the active. Okay, well, we see an easy uh, con uh, concession from our opponent there. So still not able to really uh, show off what the deck is about. But hey, that gets us eight points away from clearing the ladder. So uh, thank you. I'm not sure why somebody wants to do that, but maybe they forgot to put a certain card in their deck. Maybe we see somebody playing just grass. So this could be Celesaur, right? Well... Celestor does play Tapu Lele, so maybe they don't have the Tapu Lele. This is actually a really, really cool coin. I've never seen that coin before yet. Detective Pikachu coin. Very cool. And this is this is an alright, um, actually an alright start here, because we can Elm. And Elm is really going to thin the deck. Plus, we already have one Lorantis in our hand. We're going to obviously go grab just all of our Lorantis. Get all of them out on the bench. As many, uh, I'm sorry, Fomantis, the Fomantis. Get as many of them as we can out of our deck onto the bench. May even want to attach the energy here to do the synthesis on our next turn. Oh, it is going to be Celsor. This is going to be pretty spicy for us. Okay. We can drop this down. I don't want to show the fire memory at this point because I think they play at least one blower. We'll grab these. We see we've got all of our Sylvalian. We've got all of our type nulls. Only one nest ball though. Three net balls. All of our ultra balls. One more copy of uh, ultra sun. I think we have the other one in our hand. Okay, so all of those are in here as well. Which actually doesn't really matter in this matchup, but we have both of our fire memories, which is the most important thing. We did prize a DCE, so maybe a little hard to try and find that DCE. Maybe really nice to uh, put the energy on to do the uh, synthesis attack here. Or next turn, in case we don't get draw supporter. All right, we'll go ahead and pass our turn at that point. Now, really, really hope that we can run into a draw supporter of some kind here. Otherwise, we're going to be bricked for this match. We don't want to have a video where we are bricked. It is a reality. It does happen, though. Let's see. We do have at least seven draw supporters. We know we play the four Cynthia. We play the two Lily and the Erica. Hammers are going to be disappointing as well, especially because uh, I know that they play... Uh, E-Hammer in most Celestor lists. So that's another thing to consider of when we're going to be dropping down any sort of double colorless. We'll want to make sure it's for a knockout. We'll do this. Actually, don't mind just doing a synthesis to make this an attacker. It does 100 damage. We find another one, it'll do 120. Ah, uh, it's not ideal though. It's definitely not ideal. If this gets knocked out, it gives fodder for a turbo drive for Sil Valley. But I imagine a Guzma will come before I see anything else. Well, actually, we get a hard retreat. Okay. So they had to attach though, so we're safe for another turn. We are safe for one more turn. We get the nest ball. Okay, this is nice because we can get our type null down. 
And now we're going to synthesis onto the type null. If we have to, we'll just feed him single prize attackers until we're able to come back with the fire memory and just one shot this guy. He's got choice helmet on, which puts him up at having 300 health right now. 300 health. But Aether actually decreases how much we're going to be hurt. So I'm not going to play the other uh, sun. We will die at the end of our turn, which is upsetting. So we could actually do this. We can get rid of this. We can get rid of this. And we can grab Sylvalley. We need Sylvalley. And let's pray. Let's pray that we are able to hit on this. Oh, disappointing. Okay. A little disappointing, but we can feed him this, right? Let's see. If we attach the fire memory, we'll be doing 140 times 2, 280. So we're going to be short. We're going to be short. And luckily, he flips another tails on his hammer. Now, he won't get a knockout unless he does his GX on this. Ouch. Okay, the only thing to do is to just hard retreat. That thing's going to have to hard retreat. And here we go, turbo drive. He can't knock us out. He can't knock us out. He's going to want to confuse us. He can heal off 40 damage, but it's not going to help. The only thing that's going to help is if we flip tails. If he hits his E hammer, that would that would help him. If he if he hits if he hits um Maybe Acer... No, Acer Roll isn't really going to help him out in this situation, really. Wondrous Labyrinth could. If he drops Wondrous Labyrinth, he actually judges and gives us some more cards. So that's interesting. Maybe he wants to find the life forest. I'm not sure. It's a crushing hammer. I had a feeling one of these was going to hit. He's, uh, one out of, th one out of, oh, he's only, no, I think it needs to update. Okay, there's all three. And he GX'd. Interesting enough. Okay. Well, we are going to have to put this down. And we want a Guzma. We just want a Guzma at this point. I'm going to go ahead and attach this here. That's it for right now. So we have Cynthia next uh, for our turn. For our next turn, we have Cynthia. We'll get some draw support. We can retreat for free. He's got this one up here. We could maybe one shot it. But we are like about a turn behind really because of that crushing hammer. The acro bikes away. Pokey Nav. He gets a DCE. And he plays Judge again. So maybe he'll just give us what we need at this point, right? We need to get more Lorantis up. We need to bump the stadium as well. Judge Whistle. Does he draw a card? Okay, he draws a card off of the Judge Whistle. Here we get Magirna. We're going to thin our hand by doing that. We can put this down here. And we'll Lily for four. Okay. So this isn't bad at this point, but the problem is not having the energy. So we can bump this, we can bump that. That thins our hand a little bit. 
Um, the retreat is going to be my only option at this point. Did we lose our stretcher? We lost our stretcher, so I don't really want to lose these Lurantis at this point. Probably. Mm, let's see. I can get a knockout, though. I think at this point we're going to have to go for getting the knockout here by GXing. We're very thin on energy at this point. Very thin on energy. I guess we can turbo drive though. We can turbo drive for a knockout, right? Yes. Okay, we turbo drive for the knockout. We put this here. Okay, we're in an all right spot now because we're getting three prizes. We're in an okay spot. We're ahead in the prize race. We can bring Magirna up next turn. We need to find a DCE though. We don't want a Guzma. We don't want a Guzma. And we can't we can't Magirna and grab the the fire member, but we know we know the other we know the other one is in the deck though. Crushing hammer will hurt. Okay. So that's all of his crushing hammers at this point. We haven't been playing any of our DCE. The one that we did play was crushing hammered away and not E hammered. So E hammer could be prized. Most lists are only running for one E hammer. And there's the solar beam. Okay. We really need a really, really, really clutch key turn here. Don't want to play around with Guzma. We want to evolve at this point. We can go ahead and thin our deck here. And we can get out a Rangaroo. I'm actually going to just... I'm going to dump these at this point. Because they're not going to help me out. I'll get something else that will just thin the deck at this point. We can go ahead and put the Fire Memory down on it. We can get a, a Instruct pull for one before we Cynthia. We get a grass energy, and that's not going to be what I want. I need fire memory DCE. There's the fire memory. I play this, but it's not going to be what I need at this point. I'm going to hold on to stuff. I guess at this point we can go ahead and do this for the one energy at this point. All the hammers are gone. We're just going to have to pass. This is the fighting memory. So the only other thing would be if we get our opponent to play another judge. They're, most lists are playing two. Most lists are playing two. Any action? Wait a minute. That's the fourth hammer now. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. His GX attack actually put them back in the deck. Ouch. Um... We've forgotten about that. Now, this is all that we need. Why would you not attach the choice helmet to the active? You know, you know I hit for 280. You know I hit for 280. Why would you not do that? Um, so that's my opponent not playing smart there. We can just say well played. We'll GX to really hurt them. All right, here we are in another matchup against... Ultra Necrozma. So let's go ahead. We've got the two Lorantis in our hand. We're going to go ahead and get as many of these as we can. We see we can run a 3-3 line. We've got one prize. That is fine. At this point, we're going to get all of these down. If they kill our Magirna, well, it'll be a little bit upsetting. But at this point, hmm, we could probably Ultra Ball away the Sil Valley as well as the grass energy just to get out our type null we really 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 need to get him out this first turn and there we go now we don't have the energy so we're still going to be two turns in before we are attacking so we really really hope that our opponent doesn't hit what they need at this point. Now, they also have to take into consideration their bench space because they want to run a lot of Malamars. And as long as they have four things on their bench, we can GX a Ultra Necrozma and they will be a one-shot kill there. 
So they play a Lily. They're going to get six cards off of this Lily. They've got two Inke in play. Let's see how they play this out. Two Malamar should be good for them. They do run Fighting. So they they typically use the fighting uh, to beast ring uh, or to sledgehammer turn. So they pass at this point. So that really helps me out here. Really helps me out. I almost want to judge because they they don't really have anything else in their hand, or we would have seen them. It's hard to say at this point. I have a feeling that they're going to go off, but we really, really need to get an energy attachment. Playing Judge isn't going to guarantee us anything at that point. So we get this. That's good. We're going to keep our stadium for right now to bump their Viridian Force. Viridian Force is going to come, going to come out soon. I know it. And since we don't have, um, we're not playing Cynthia this turn, we can kind of wait at this point. Now I expect to see Viridian Forest come down. I'm going to see Mysterious Treasure away in energy for the first Malamar on the bench. I'm wondering if they have the escape boards because I know they play Jirachi. We saw the metal in the deck box. Let's see what they're thinking here. I'm very surprised to see that Ultra Necrozma would be brick. That's, that's very rare from ever happening. Okay, they attach their Psychic, and then they Guzma. Because they have the Beast Energy, it is going to be a knockout. It's upsetting. Okay, that's the fighting. Everyone is teching back in Mars Shadow into this. I was expecting it to be the... Uh, the Buzzwool, but Marshadow's getting teched back into this list. I'm see I'm seeing it everywhere. Honestly, swing swing those matchups. Understandable. Uh, Magirna is going to go up. Or actually, let's instead of Magirna going up, let's go ahead and, and uh, just give him up a Full Mantis at this point. Doesn't really doesn't really bother me because we grab another Full Mantis here. Now let's play our Stadium because we don't want to see that again. This is disappointing because we're going to be behind and they can Malamar onto that Marshadow at this point, right? They'll be able to get two energy on there. They need steel for it. Um, netball doesn't really, really help here. So let's thin it. Does nothing. Does absolutely nothing at this point. We can... We can get our type null back out at least. And we can get our DCE down. See if we can do this here. It's going to be very hard against this matchup. But let's take a let's take a whack at it here. And let's see if we're able to pull this off. So the Guzmas, if he Marshadows... Uh, if he gets Marshadow powered up with two Psychic Recharges, he still needs to drop a Metal on here and play Guzma to knock this out. Instead of doing that, he just opts for going for the, the straight-up attack at this point. Drops an Escape Board. I guess he just wants to thin his hand to get some, to get some value out of his... his Lily there. He puts... Giratina, another good tech for that deck, into the discard pile. It's surprising you don't see more people wanting to play the gold Ultra Necrozma. And there he does Distortion Door. I believe that's the name of it. Yes, and drops down damage counters on two of my bench Pokemon. So we're going to go ahead and put this up here. Attach. We might as well bump these things and get this uh have this field blower get full value at this point. Then we're gonna go ahead and play Erica for six. This is really, really nice here. Because we have the fire member, we should not have any weakness once that Marsh Shadow tries to come up here. So this may fool him. This may fool him and think that he does have the advantage here. So we're caught back up at this point. So let's see if he's aware of the interaction here between. Hopefully it's not bugged because there are some hiccups with this card being bugged. We have Guzma. We have a play onto the Marshadow. We can knock the Marshadow out. We're doing 160 
with our fire memory. I haven't seen any field blowers come down. And there he is. He's putting the metal attachment on. He's psychic recharging there. I think he thinks he's going to get this because he has the 10 on here and he would do 200. He just needs to retreat. We see Jirachi come down on the bench as well. He filled his bench back up again. He's got Malamar and he's going to switch. Without a choice ban, this isn't going to be a knockout, I believe. 80, 80, plus the 20. No knockout. Okay, we need to get this other type null up. Put this down here. We can't take off the fire memory, unfortunately, at this point. So we're just gonna turbo drive. We do 160, we one shot the Marshadow. We're gonna put it on our type null. We get two more prizes. We get our other fire memory, perfect. We've only used uh, two Altar of the Sun, so we do have another one. We do have another one. He's gonna Jirachi Stellar Wish. He could knock us out with the, let's see, do we have a Lorantis in the discard? We don't have a Lorantis in the discard. So if we hit into another Lorantis, we should be okay. We actually see Gengar Mimikyu come down. Interesting. It would have been better to save our uh, GX for that. I didn't realize that their list would play that. I don't think very many do play that though. He's going to make it so I can't play any cards from my hand. I'm imagining he's going to GX. If that is so, then I'm going to want to put up the Magirna. I'm going to want to put up the Magirna. Oh, he doesn't GX. He doesn't GX. And we can Ultra Ball for the third one and we have the fire memory so we can kill the tapu lele we can kill the tapu lele that was sort of a misplay on my opponent's part by doing that there we have another fire memory we can get rid of one type null one guzma we can get our other lorantis we hit 180 now we can say well played Flash the Guzma, extend the hand, and say, well played. It shows you how the Altar of Sun can be very powerful against anything that has the fighting uh, attacker. So the Marsh Shadow is getting teched into the Altar Necrozma list now we see to be able to one shot the Zoroarks and things of that nature. So uh, even the Picaroms as well. So that evens that matchup for them. But because we run the Altar of the Sun and the Fire Memories, we are able to avoid getting one shotted there. So that really, really helps us out. Even though we had a couple of rough turns where we uh, were kind of like a step behind, hoping that our opponent would sort of brick which didn't happen, we were able to mount a comeback because we don't have that fighting weakness, which is very, very critical. And why we run that interaction with the fire memory, we become the fire type, we drop the altar of sun, we no longer have that fighting weakness. So we are able to also do this against Pikaram, but in the opposite way with the Celesaur. So instead of running the fire memory, we run the fighting memory and we one shot the Pikaram. And in case we're running Zapdos and friends, uh, are running up against Zapdos and friends and they run the Buzzwolves, we can also have that same situation where they're not getting weakness damage. And 120 is enough to one shot, well, not just Jirachi, but Zapdos as well. So hopefully uh, the next matchup that I can get for you guys is gonna be against a Picaram deck.